Hi and welcome to Matrix Moments. This is Saloni and in today's episode we aim to uncover the journey of building Daily Hunt, India's leading content and news aggregator platform. They are also the pioneers in the local language content and distribution space. Joining us for this discussion are the founders of Daily Hunt, Virendra Gupta and Umang Bedi, as well as Vikram Vaidyanathan, managing director at Matrix Partners India. Viru and Umang's successful partnership as co-founders is a well-known and a well-celebrated fact. We talk about the dynamics of their partnership and also cover the changing face of content consumption in India and how Daily Hunt has been at the forefront of each of these changes. Key milestones and strategies that shape their journey as well as the long-term vision for the company. We cover all of this and more in this episode. Tune in to part one. Hi everyone, it's my great pleasure to welcome the founders of Daily Hunt. Uh, Viru Gupta and uh, and Umang Bedi, uh, I love hanging out with them, and uh, it's a shame that it's taken me this long to get them on a on a podcast. Uh, it's probably because they have had like a big eighteen months, uh, very successful, but also super busy. So that's why I think it's taken uh, me time to get them on the podcast. But good to have you guys finally uh, here, and I'm really going to touch upon the journey of how you created this. Wonderful partnership in this podcast. Quick introductions. Uh, Viru grew up in small town India, uh, across uh, uh, Rajasthan, uh, predominantly. Ended up at IIT Bombay. Um, started his career at, with stints at Trilogy, Airtel, uh, on mobile. But honestly, uh, he founded uh, this company as Verse. Uh, I think 13, 14 years back. And I think that's his life. Uh, and I don't think he can remember uh, life before uh, before being a being a founder at all. So welcome, Viru. Thank and you. his partner in crime, uh, Umang Bedi, also grew up uh, all over India and uh, started his early career. I actually had to brush up before this podcast at Sun, Symantec, and so on. But he was one of the youngest country head or perhaps the youngest country head at, uh, at Intuit. Uh, continued uh, to do that at Adobe where he was again the country head and ended up with a big big job uh, as head of India at Facebook. Uh, and then I remember making uh, this intro and then the two, two of you guys dated or uh, chatted for, for like a year uh, before it became this relationship and I always use this relationship as like kum ke mele mein bichde hue bhai and suddenly now they, they suddenly come together and they compare the, the the necklace the amulet and then they came together uh, and that's the relationship today so tell me how this happened uh, maybe we will start with you on uh, how did this uh, you know the beginnings of this partnership happen uh, thanks vikram and uh, you know uh, just taking off from how we introduced Umang. So Umang was CEO at the age where I didn't know what meaning of CEO was. So when I met him, he told me that he became CEO at age of 27. So I didn't know what the full form of CEO was at the age of 27. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, coming back to the question which you asked, so Vikram, you know, you were the part of the journey that, you know, we took early bets on local language and mobile first. And from 2012 to 2016, we were go- growing pretty nicely because, you know, uh, India was growing at a certain pace in local language. You know, we were building our business silently and it was not too sexy to be in a local language space, right? We all knew that in long term, it would pay off, but, but India was growing at, at its own pace. Then in 2016, uh, Geo happened, right? We all know what Geo did, that the local language became very sexy and... Uh, the user base in local language in hinterland of country suddenly grew up uh, and the market became very, very attractive for both Chinese companies and companies from US. Uh, and, for, and, you know, unfortunately, you know, we, we were caught on a bit of a, you know, uh, unprepared during that period. And during that period, Facebook was growing very, very heavily and videos was growing and some of the things which, you know, we all spoke about during that period. And that's where I got introduced to Umang. And my objective of meeting him was to learn, you know, what the hell is he doing in Facebook to kind of grow it to X3S uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, and honestly, you know, we didn't meet on a Zoom. Otherwise, this partnership would not have happened. We met face to face, you know, having, uh, he was having chicken, I was having paneer. 
when I met him for the first time, uh, I dressed up nicely and rehearsed some English words because I was supposed to meet a Facebook CEO. And the moment I went, met him, he started in Punjabi and Hindi. So, so uh, I think, you know, it says that, you know, if you start well, you know, half of the battle is won, right? So we, we established a pretty good friendship uh, in some sense there. And we spoke very honestly about what each of us is doing and, you know, what each of our companies is going through. And I think that honesty and that openness uh, became the fundamental, you know, thesis of getting, you know, being in, establishing a connect with each other. And we continued to remain in touch with each other. We continued to exchange notes. He was looking at what we are doing in local language. I was looking at how he's growing the user base and revenue 3x. Uh, and, uh, you know, Umang Bedi being Umang Bedi, uh, you know, he was looking for an entrepreneurial itch, which I could guess after a few meetings. And as we started meeting each other and dating each other, if I may use that word, uh, you know, it was a very soft topic and you couldn't have touched it very easily. Uh, you know, only when he said that he is already taking a leap of an entrepreneurship and he, were, he had started a company in B2P space, uh, you know, I kind of said, hey, look, bro, you know, India is a land where, you know, big daddies are ruling the space in, in, in the space we are operating at. And, uh, and uh, you know, Daily End is a consumer internet business and that's where heart of Umang is. And, you know, Umang dwelled on it, he thought about it, and then we took a holiday in Goa. And finally, you know, I, I think that's where the yeah. deal was sealed, if I may use the word deal. But, but, yeah. uh, I, I'm going to come back to that holiday in Goa later. <laughs> <laughs> so look, broadly, I've, I mean, I've just narrated the whole incident. Yeah. So, Umang, how, how did this uh, work from your end, right? You had this vantage point at Facebook and then uh, this company which you've heard about but uh, don't know that much about, uh, suddenly this matures into this kind of relationship. Yeah, no, I think, uh, let me start by saying that the first time I met Viru, three things struck me about him, which is very different from most founders I've met during my tenure at Facebook or at Adobe or, you know, before that. I think the first one was... Uh, Viru is one of those extra humble visionaries. Okay, He bet on mobile only when the whole world was flip-flopping between mobile and desktop. And he bet on desk, uh, on local language. Both of these were highly unsexy decisions back then. right? Um, and while he never admitted, he'll always say, I stumbled upon it among and it just happened in the course of time. It takes, it takes balls to make those early bets. right? And that struck me with the factor of humility. Um, those are the three things, right? Um, making these two big bets and being extremely humble in that process. And what I realized in my journey um, of, you know, 20 years as a corporate, uh, corporate slut, if I could call it that, uh, is you ended up having fun, but there came a point in time when you weren't creating value. Or uh, most go to mark, most organizations for multinationals are reduced to go to market organizations. Um, and influencing some form of policy. Uh, you're not really making impact on product. You're not really driving uh, key decisions that you could or should uh, be doing. And that gave me an entrepreneurial itch. I turned 40, uh, looked at myself in the mirror, didn't like who I saw, uh, was 140 kilos, um, was not having fun, uh, was spending half my time convincing uh, corporate uh, you know, in terms of PowerPoint and was just not enjoying myself. So I decided as a flip of a switch that I'm going to give up probably the best paying job in tech um, with one of the most admired companies in Facebook and say, let's do, let's restart, right? And drive a mental, physical and transformational journey on the business um, around being an entrepreneur. Now, you know, that sounds nicer, rosier, sexier now, but if you have to start as an entrepreneur, it is hard, right? Even the, the basics of the building blocks are hard. I think what happened with Biru and me was a culmination of a vision around three things. The first was, you know, this is a big boy space, like Biru said. It's dominated around the world by two large behemoths. And so what does it take to create a large multi-billion dollar digital media company in a market where the behemoths are present? It hadn't been done before, barring in China. And foolishly, we thought that we could go down that journey and do it because of the early foundation that Viru had built on Daily Hunt with the local language base, right? And so we said, let's go deep onto local language, but let's 
come up with that clear vision as to why are we doing this, right? The second bit, I think, which he very clearly harped upon was brutal intellectual honesty. What are your goals? What are my goals? Whether it is spiritual, emotional, uh, financial, uh, short term, long term, it was all out in the open, right? I mean, there was this complete trust, whether it was in Hindi, Punjabi or with, you know, uh, profanities uh, within, uh, I think that trust was built very early. Um, and I think the third thing, if I could call that out, was Viru struck me as a founder who didn't suffer from founderitis. Uh, <laughs> and let me explain what I mean by that, right? Most founders are, it's about me. I know the vision. I know the product. I know the tech. And I know the market. And you know, the sun shines on the ground that I walk on, right? Uh, that's what I call founderitis in my I way. like because I'm, I'm going to use it, founderitis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Viru, uh, it's very, it's, it takes a lot of confidence and a lot of self-belief to welcome a brother later in the journey, right? And to have that trust. Um, and, you know, it's easier said than done. All of this is Angrezi un and, you know, English, but... Viru actually walked the talk. He brought me on as a partner, was open enough to take these big, bold moves, uh, was very open to having me involved in every key decision. And I think that's the foundation. Once you get that chemistry growing, his, you know, the history of the company, the growth, all of that follows. But I think that chemistry or that bond, that trust, and not suffering from founderitis and having that ability uh, to bring on a brother and you know that that relationship has grown so i think those are three very special things about viru um and so, let's be honest you know he made my journey as an entrepreneur he molly coddled me into it right <laughs> and i had to go and set up a company and do the whole uh yeah. nine yards so it was it was kind of a blessing in disguise that worked both ways absolutely so i i'll just comment on this founder right this and i've always found this uh remarkable about uh about viru where he extremely secure in his skin and he will say, I don't know this. And there must be somebody who knows this much better than I do. Let me go find that person. Uh, and I think that's a very, very powerful quality. I want to come back to this Goa holiday. It was not actually a Goa holiday. Umang was on holiday with his family. <laughs> <laughs> and Viru said, this is the time he was going to go and go to Goa and make this decision. Let me also go to Goa. And Viru didn't take his family. He just went on alone. <laughs> and so, uh, talk about, uh, uh, did that pursuit help? Uh, uh, Umang, I don't think he pursued uh, e even his wife in that manner, where, you know, he pursued her to go on until she said yes. So, you know, this is, it's a funny thing. I have to narrate this. I was on a, I, I came to the meeting dressed very casually and we actually had a blazer on. <laughs> and then, of course, he got rid of it, right? Uh, but it was really, really sweet. Uh, he just showed it. Um, and it showed that we want to go that extra mile to make this vision happen, right? Um, and I think the foundation, you know, barring the Goa bit and everything, but the foundation that was laid in, I remember 2017 September, I resigned from Facebook. I was with the company till end of December 2017. 18 is when um, I came on board early on uh, with, uh, and it was Christmas Day. I so distinctly remember Christmas, December 2017 when Viru and I met. And I think it was historic in a, its own way because I think we got to understand, we had tough conversations, we we pressed about what all we could do. Uh, and I think that's the foundation, yeah, Vikram. I yeah. think uh, it's, he was just such a cool guy. He'll never go about saying it. Uh, it's, it's just He's just the most amazing friend and partner I could have ever dreamt of uh, asking. Likewise. So, t tell me a little bit about uh, what was the toughest conversation uh, and People expect, you know, uh, getting someone like an own baby on board. The toughest conversation would be about money, but it wasn't. I know that 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 wasn't actually the toughest conversation. What were some of the toughest conversations on, you know, role definition? How did you build that trust? And maybe give us a, a sense of like one conversation that, in your mind, was the toughest. So I think we started off on a little bit of a, where the company was going through a transformation period um, and we realized that we had very big growth ambitions, very big plans which want, needed us to be all in 
but our ego if i could use that top gun dialogue our ego was writing checks that we could not cash uh because we weren't flushed with funds um and we were going about a pretty uh dicey fundraise process at that point of time and i think it was this wasn't a conversation it was kind of implicit viru i don't know if you remember uh but you know when viru and i got together it was on we had this assumption that we are raising a whole lot of money uh and we're going to go all guns blazing um and we realized that that money wasn't there um in a you know in a month's time and so uh i think it was a test of uh our commitment to each other i remember you know vikram i over a drink you telling me that you thought i wouldn't be there uh and wouldn't last out and you know i'm sure viru had his own doubts early on but i think we both came together and said heads down you know let's fire the banker let's do this ourselves let's raise the capital um and irrespective of what we have we're going to make it work um i think i don't know if it was a tough conversation or it was just left unsaid or you know i don't know viru i'd love for you to chime in there but i think that was an early start that just showed our commitment to each other so i'm going to come back to this going to war together uh but and i, I will come back to it but viru from your end what was the toughest part of convincing umang to join at that at that point fair enough so uh, we'll come to that part which umang referred later on but if you are saying pre pre umang coming on board see i think one of the toughest conversation one needs to have for such decisions is not with somebody else but with himself or herself because having a conversation with somebody else is very easy if you are clear that uh, what do you want from this relationship why are you doing this and simplifying that thought process is not easy by the way it's very easy to say that but it's not easy so so far you can you know reflect on it introspect on it and be clear you remember we have this conversations that we were meeting a lot of people by the way right and and not for this thing but hey we need to grow the company but you remember we said yeah i can't put a finger on it why this is not what i am looking for you know what i mean this is still this person will still do what i am asking him to do you know i think yeah. this is a conversation vikram we had while you know a lot of times right when we are meeting a lot of other people so so i think it's it's as a you know as a person who's responsible for you know at that point of time for you know for making right decisions for daily hunt and what is required for business i think you and what you can do and what you can't do i think you will resolve all that thing in your mind very very clearly uh, and if you are able to relate to the person that's what can get a person like umang bedi you know excited about coming on board right because there is no job spec honestly there is, there is no role spec <laughs> so so, yeah. so in my so mind say, that's a big I, I, i'll tell you a few things that at least i remember from that period of time because viru was talking to me on the uh, on the on the other side one i think the you know heart to heart conversations that you had and it seemed very fluffy but it it is actually the truth the heart to heart on what uh, each of you want wants to do in life and what each of you wants to achieve in life i think that helped i think the second word we you said on just being very clear and just laying it all out on the table uh, and I, now that i uh, know both of you much better uh, it is you know there's nothing left unsaid uh, yes. and, and there was nothing left unsaid in those uh, in those conversations at at all um i would say it, it is uh, it is a big deal uh for for a founder like me to actually say i'm going to carve out a lot of my role uh to mom and he just did it very easily because he was just so clear uh, clear in his head and uh, like viru said we weren't actually looking for an among baby right we were looking for head of marketing head of sales we were looking for all these heads but uh you saw among and he almost created the role for mom versus like finding you know like a person for a, uh, for a box and i thought that was fantastic how did the org take it right there's a big disruption there's you know, there there's there's one boss and now there there are two uh, how did you communicate uh, this to the org and i must tell all of our uh, listeners that today if i talk to one of them it's like talking to both of them because i know as soon as i tell one something it will go to the other immediately <laughs> uh, and that's that's how that's how it works uh, so which for me is beautiful but i can see for the org it might it might have taken some time to get there and also uh, that transition period must have been tough for the org 
I don't know, I'm reflecting on it, but <clears throat> I think one thing that worked was never imposing a multinational view of the world onto the company. Hey, I came from Facebook or from Adobe and this is what happened there and this is the way to get things done. Um, I think that was something that, it's not me inherently as my nature, but I don't think I ever did that. And I think in the first one month of just learning, because the first one month of learning what's going on, you never impose that point of view. You just maybe ask a question or, you know, go a little deeper or think about Viru and I catching up on the side. So I felt it was very seamless. I know Viru may have enabled a whole bunch of things on the back end, uh, but I felt it was like, I, I felt at home uh, on day one. I remember calling Viru uh, even before coming to office on the first day saying, dude, I just love this badge. Um, I, I don't know if you remember that view. You put a post on Twitter as well. You put a post on Twitter I as well. It, exactly. Yeah, so it, it was, there was just, and not that our logo is the sexiest in the world. <laughs> it was just a feeling of, this is my baby now, right? And I think you can own it that way and reflect it in all your conversations that this is ours with genuinity, right? Because all the good is also yours, all the bad is also yours. You can't run away from it. Um, and so if you carry that equally on both sides, um, I think there is genuineness that gets created and the org realizes it. And then they know that Viru and my relationship is something that no one can really play with because we're so open and close to each other uh, yeah. that there never would be any of that. I think that was very foundational in the beginning. I don't know, Viru, what do you think there? Viru, I don't know if there are other sort of almost like mechanisms or design principles that you thought of at that point in time that we'll always be in meetings together uh, make sure that you know everyone is taken into confidence of this transition plan whatever that was and maybe it's really instructive for young founders in that so we can break it into two phases you know uh, i mean one is when the person just comes in and one is when the person is operating then they're two different things right so when the person just comes in, I think the one thing was that, you know, uh, the whole org was super excited. Okay, because, uh, you know, everybody had seen the growth of Facebook, Umang had led it. Everybody was dying to copy what Facebook had done and learn and wanting daily and to do well. So that was, I think that was the one key thing, you know. And second thing, big thing was Umang himself, right? Uh, while he has a suave, suaveness of an MNC and a big company, but he's very entrepreneurial, you know, in his mindset, very hands-on. So the organization felt they're speaking to somebody like them. They're not speaking to somebody unlike them. And, and, and I think that's the biggest beauty about, you know, Umang, where he has seen big boys, he has set up shop for big boys in India, led them to a growth, which of course couldn't have done if he was not entrepreneurial in his mindset. And I think that's what, you know, went very well with our org. So that's the starting point, right? Uh, the second point is, I think our org feels the same way as you feel. That if they call one of us, they will hear the same thing. <laughs> or if they tell us anything, it will go to the other guy. So I think it's the same principle. Like, like you are convinced that, you know, it, that, that this is what is happening. Even the guys in the team are, you know, there'll be a few things which they will hide, you know, small, small, petty things. That's okay. That's part for the, you know, course. But broadly, all big things, you know, they know that it's going to seamlessly flow through each other. So yeah. that's the no, that's initial, yeah, that's the initial part, right? And look, in the initial part, you got to play your, you know, uh, you got to play who is front ending, who is back ending in certain discussions, and that comes very naturally. If the intent is to uh, is to make it work, and intent is to make sure that it's the right thing for the company, you know, you take on the flat decisions and do it. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to go back to that going to war together. And I do think it was like a defining moment for, for you guys. And uh, I think it moved from, uh, and it was, I think, week two, week three, or maybe uh, because there was a term sheet signed, it fell through, it was a big term sheet. Uh, and suddenly uh, it, it was a true entrepreneurial fight for survival at that point, point in time, if I can use that. And, um, how important was that being in the trenches and seeing that commitment from among uh, you know, for you to say, okay, this is my co-founder and you know, uh, both of you need to turn brother. 
so uh, look uh, honestly you know i think that was a big defining moment you know uh, and uh, uh, you know we were i mean the term sheet from one was one of the biggest guy in the world right whom everybody aspires to get money from and uh, the deal fell through due to no unknown reasons right uh, and to me the defining moment was how bad umang bedi felt you know uh, what what action one takes is is okay but i think he took it so personally he took it more personally than i took it and to me that was a, you know and to me and to the organization and to everybody to all of you as well i think that was a you know a watershed moment where you know uh, the trigger i mean that incident what triggered him clearly showed the mental ownership he had for this business it clearly showed the feeling and the emotion he had for this business and for all of us and i think that was a big big watershed moment that's actually well put and i you know having uh, gotten to know among you know this when he takes things personally yes. you know a lot of profanity <laughs> comes out and then he is just uh, <laughs> like this you know unstoppable yes. force yes. that will go through any He's a tornado and, and you know that's the first time that i saw that you know unstoppable uh, force uh, among i know like today you love daily hunt right it is like you love daily hunt uh, as it's your own and how important was that uh, trigger point for you in you know converting what was like maybe affection into like true sort of love yeah no no i think see that trigger point was personal because uh, it was going to hamper our plans and we had uh, you know we come to what we had done but we had redefined the mission of the company we were making some massive big bold bets on the foundation that viru had built over the last few years um and so it was a very pivotal moment where had we not gotten over that hump we never get to those plans if you know what i mean right so the i think the learning there was and i remember viru and me saying hey you know what we're going to jump on a plane no business class we're going to fly economy all over the world if we have to but we're going to ensure that we raise this capital right and uh, i remember at times were tough viru was like hey you go for this one and you know there was a complete trust uh, in enabling it i think for me again that shows the ability to trust someone else i don't know if i would have been able to do it that's the awesomeness of viru now that happened very seamlessly maybe we didn't even have money to get on to two planes right because we were conserving every rupee um and maybe it was that i don't know but viru will give you all his humble answer right um but just think about it from viru's perspective uh to trust a guy flying halfway across somewhere to go and raise capital um and not that i was successful or not i think that's that's another story but just to trust so to me that was a very big thing the second thing that i think worked really well was our pivot um uh, in terms of a transformation on top of daily hunt where in our first version we were the largest vernacular focused indic language news aggregator and we said that we want to become the ai driven content discovery platform for bharat and what that really meant is we wanted to be the largest digital media platform uh focused on local languages we needed to drive discovery of content socialization and consumption of content that's not just informational uh but it is engaging and entertaining and so we had to explore content we had to explore genres we had to drive a new feed architecture we had to drive a new discoverability algo at the back end we had to drive more video we had to drive hyper local uh and on top of all of this uh add a whole bunch of monetization right because we are only in business till you can make money uh, and so we had those plans uh but we had no money <laughs> right so it was um you know putting the first step that try and capitalize the business and at the same time yeah get the team motivated yes. to move towards this journey right and i think that those two were the big watershed moments and i felt very much at home um uh i i remember uh, after 20 years i got into the economy section of a flight and viru and i took seven of them together and you know we slept like a baby even there like it didn't really change because uh, the beauty for me is i get onto a plane and viru knows this by the time it's pushing back i can knock off no matter i'm in the middle row of economy or in the first row of first class it doesn't matter to me so i think that humility on both sides to acknowledge and we never said yaar ki business kyun nahi ja rahe ho these were very unspoken conversations because we knew 
what was our cash in the bank and to where are we going to stretch it so you don't even go into those petty things those are you're larger than that on both sides thanks for tuning in you can also follow us on twitter linkedin and youtube for more updates